Ladies and gentlemen, once again, uh, another session, an encore session uh, <laughs> with the one and only Brandy Sellers Jackson, the author of On Thriving. Um, you've been helping so many people in, in our conversations, I mean, through your book. I mean, even talk, I mean, God, Oprah and them's attention and stuff. Like, you, you, you one of the, the new voices. <laughs> how does that feel? Uh, it was interesting how I found out about the Oprah Daily thing. Yeah. Um, I had just finished riding a roller coaster, like a real roller coaster, yeah. at an amusement park with my kids. Yeah. And so afterward, I don't know why I did this, but I decided to check my email. Because that's what you do after you ride yeah, a roller coaster. Yeah, you, you go straight to the email. Yeah, so I did that, and then that's when my team was like, hey, <laughs> Oprah Daily. And I was like, wait, yeah. I was shaking a lot, so yeah. maybe that's... <laughs> but yeah, it's been great. And then even like, you know, people... You know, I would say that speak so highly of you and that mm -hmm. have even been in those, you know, best selling spaces mm -hmm. and been in the worlds of the Oprah's and all the talk shows is Dr. Mm -hmm. Laura Berman, mm -hmm. kind of the person yeah. who connected us. Uh, it's just rare air that y'all are in of like helpers and healers mm -hmm. and leaders of, of, of today and yeah. Everything from, you know, working on yourself to even your own personal relationships. And that's, mm -hmm. we were just talking earlier, like, you, this is a great success, but mm -hmm. I would say probably your greatest success is probably your family. And, and yeah. you've been married for 18 years together for 20 plus. Yeah. Yeah. How in the hell do you do that? Like, that's impressive. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, that's true success right there. Uh, yeah. Being, you know, in today's day and age and. You talk about this in the book. Mm -hmm. Like I told you in the last session, we get all in your business. I'm fine with that. You were talking about, you know, you and your husband's relationship. Mm -hmm. And even early on, mm -hmm. you know, struggling with things with infidelity. Mm -hmm. and, you know, him kind of, I think he's in the music space. Yeah. yeah. Um, so him kind of, you know, going and yeah. being a musician. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh -huh. Uh -huh. And you having to be the... The woman at home mm. holding them down. Mm. But whatever y'all did, you figured it out. I mean, I, you talked about what you did a little bit in the book, mm -hmm. but like how you guys had to be mm -hmm. be there for one another. But maybe you could kind of give some some insight and advice to mm -hmm. people who find themselves in similar situations today. Because and you talking to mm -hmm. you, mm -hmm. you, you talking to the <laughs> yeah. yeah 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 the the one who who doesn't live the the traditional life yeah style. Well, first I'll say this, you know, the fact that we've been married for 18 years, you know, after discovering the infidelity, our goal was not to keep the marriage together. Mm. I think that when and if partners find themselves in that, I think sometimes that's their goal is to keep the marriage together, keep the family together, keep... Right. That wasn't our goal. Our goal, my goal, <laughs> let me say that, my goal <laughs> was to heal. Mm. My goal was to, for once, not worry or think about my partner. Mm. Think about me. Because when we got together, I mean, we were kids. If you think about that, like, we got married when we were 23. Oh, yeah, yeah. True kids. 23? Yeah. When I think of that, and then we had a kid a year later, our prefrontal cortex wasn't even fully it developed. Even developed yet. Which checks out on some of the decisions we made. It's like, <laughs> wow, that makes sense why that decision was a little, yeah. little dicey there. Yeah. But I think of that, and for the first time, I needed to heal. I needed to check in on Brandy. I needed to be less concerned about my partner or this human that I decided to partner with. <laughs> right, right. Right? And so I would say for us, the way that it has continued is that our healing has been the bedrock. And it just so happened that he started to heal and he started to do his inner work and figure out why is it that this was an option? Why is it that I made a certain decision and I decided to do this. Why is it that I wasn't honest, right? Why wasn't I, why wasn't I just honest? Why is it that, you know, here's a person that honesty is important. Why is it that 
I have certain trauma. What is that? Mm. So because he started to heal and I started to heal, it just so happens that our marriage ended up healing. Right. That was though not the forefront. <laughs> I mean, take me back to that. Afterwards. Yeah, I was saying, take me back to that moment because it feels like, you know, we live in this land of monogamy. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. From a male's perspective, I'm not speaking for every male, but yeah. from from this one sitting here, that is a that is a difficult walk, especially when you're exposed to you know yeah. things outside of your family. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know temptation, and mm-hmm. especially like even for me, I don't even see it as because mm-hmm. I don't necessarily walk in mm-hmm. in that traditional monogamy state. Yeah, it doesn't. I don't even feel like I'm doing wrong. Well, you're honest. Yeah, yeah. so it's like that's a different thing, though. You know, yeah. you're honest. Right. And you're forthright. Right. You know what you want. You know who you are. You know those right. are that's. That's a great thing. <laughs> right. No, for real though. Yeah. That's a wonderful thing. Right. Many people don't have that. But I still <laughs> have an issue because mm-hmm. I'm still watching other people's feelings be hurt. Mm. And so as honest as I am, and like I'm not monogamous, and even from the day I meet you, that's like the first mm-hmm. thing. Hi, my name's Nick, and I'm not monogamous. <laughs> uh, <laughs> like, yeah. But it's. I still have feelings. I still mm-hmm. I still love deeply. Yeah. I'm still a hopeless romantic. I still want you to mm-hmm. thrive. Mm-hmm. Uh, but then when I watch mm-hmm. my actions hurt others, then it's like, oh, I want to pull back on the honesty just a little bit mm. because I know my honesty hurts. Mm. So I went from being brutally honest. Got and it. even as in my younger years and even so, you know, like... I, you know, it was it was an angry young. Like, I don't, I'm never in this and that. And, you <laughs> it's know, like, well, we know how you feel. I, yeah, I can't trust you, and I don't this and like I was, and now I'm a little softer. But then what I, mm. you know, and even Dr. Berman has attempted to help me with this because mm. I have the I I have the disease of omission, uh, mm. where I tend to be like, oh, I know if I say this, it's probably gonna hurt her. So I'm just going to omit it and not Got say it. anything. Mm. And hopefully that it just scaves over. That's never hopefully the my charisma. Will, that, no, uh, that's never the answer. <laughs> yeah, I, but I, I'm, I've learned that <laughs> in, on many different occasions. But, and I think that'll even lead to what, you know, some of the comments we were getting is just like, today there seems like mm-hmm. there's an imbalance, there's a, there's a disconnect. Mm-hmm. Specifically between the black man and, and mm-hmm. the black woman, but I think in just men and women in general. I mm-hmm. mean, if we're gonna be honest, you know, monogamy was never designed, even in its nature, mm-hmm. for the woman. Monogamy mm-hmm. was designed to make the man feel more comfortable. Mm-hmm. You know, from from matrimony all the way down into like, look, if I'm the provider, I'm the protector. I need to know that whatever mm-hmm. you're birthing is mine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, to the core yeah. of what monogamy is. Yeah. And so what mm. I bring, I, as the man, or I'm building the house, I'm doing all of this, and I need to know the who mm. I keep inside this house is mine. And see, when you say it like that, that's <laughs> that's a trip. I've never heard of it like that before. Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. yeah. I mean, like, and the core of what it was, because, we, you know, before that, you know, we can get to the spaces of tribalism. We get, there, was yeah, a, yeah, yeah. there was an issue, and in, in even certain tribes, they don't right. have a problem with it. But, in, you know, even when we go into more of the European spaces, mm-hmm. it's there, it, the man's mentality, which was a very mm-hmm. patriarch type of mentality, is like, mm-hmm. these, this is mine. It's mine. And, and that's why, you know, when, when, I, when I'm finessing, I, I, I use that. Like, I don't want to own anybody. I don't want to own I don't, You know what I mean? I, you uh, exist, I exist. I see. I'm not into this colonial mindset oh, okay. of, of okay. matrimony. Uh-huh. And see, I can see if you put it like that, you're like, yeah. You are free, my, my queen. <laughs> yes, I got that. Yes. <laughs> but I mean, in, 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 in all of its seriousness, That's funny, yeah. there is, you know, as much, because, and just probably when, once women started working and providing mm. for themselves within the last 100, 150 years, that's when uh, monogamy became an equal thing. Mm. 
Yeah. It used to be you are monogamous to me. Mm. And as a man, I can roam and do whatever I want. I just need to know that my the reason why I put that ring on mm. your finger yeah. is so the world knows that you are mine. Mm. And so that's. Ugh. I mean, I ain't, I ain't, I ain't is... <laughs> but I'm just saying one of the reasons why I just yeah. don't subscribe to it because yeah. I feel like ultimately, uh, and even when we talk about emotions, yeah, I I deal in a space of there's a lot of emotion constantly, and luckily I get to lean into like I just want to be the best father I can be, mm -hmm. and a lot of that there's a lot of healing that needs to occur because what I I went from okay, I feel like I may have failed in this space, so I'm gonna just do it again and do it again until I get it right and get it right. And yeah. you look up and it's like, all right, well, mm -hmm. now I gotta be super dad. Now mm. I have to, you know, where high insight, you know, it's like yeah. it dealing with the issue from mm. the beginning of, you know, I may have failed, but I wasn't a failure. Yeah. And there, like you said, I can't put that energy on, mm. you know, to to my family either. No. So, yeah. but, you know, if I'm digging deep into where it started, it's like, I always felt like I failed at relationships. Hmm. I failed and I feel like because I'm not speaking the same language, I'm not, I'm, I'm not, if I'm being honest and I, again, I can't speak for all men because I've made this mistake before, but I just don't think it's in our nature Hmm. to be monogamous so we put up these facades and mm. that's what like I do believe like I believe it can happen I believe it yeah, has yeah, to be yeah. ordained by God I believe there's discipline yeah. there's the, a man has to really work hard mm -hmm. at saying I want to be with this one person for the rest of my life where I don't necessarily think women have mm. to work that hard maybe wrong but I feel like it's more in their nature to be nurturers, to to plant, to say this mm -hmm. is mine, and yeah, I, I, that's just how I feel. Maybe, but in, you know, today's generation is probably even a little different because yeah, it's you know our our, our ways of thought have have yeah. been blended a little bit more. But it, it, it used to be yeah. that if a man was going to be faithful to a woman, he had to work at that. He needed to go to God. He needed, you know, he needed yeah. where, but women like, that's all they, once they love, they love that man, they love that man and they don't want any well, other man. Because I feel like too, and this might just be me. I personally, I have a thing called decision fatigue. Mm. <laughs> like, the I- Overload. <laughs> I just, too much is too much. Right, right. Like if I had, like John, John and I talk about this, but like if we could clone ourselves. Right. Like would I want 10 different Johns? <laughs> and I love John. Right, right. I don't know about that. Right. Like I- One I, that stay in the bed all the time, one that fix <laughs> the room. That's too many. One that go to work. But here's the thing, <laughs> I, too many brandies is too many brandies too. Right, right. You know, so, you know, I think that it's a matter of, I love your communication. Right. I mean, I don't know how you communicate. I, I try, <laughs> but, I'm trying, but, 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 yeah, but I, as I, I, I try to be as open as I possibly right, can. Right, but I think like honesty and communication is key. If you're doing that, right. that's wonderful. Because well, then I'm giving you the decision. It gets like, right. I, Right. I, I don't ever want to make it seem like uh, is I'm running running game or any of right. that type of stuff because it's like I don't I I don't like to be like it's not my responsibility to make you happy. You mm -hmm. you're responsible for your own happiness. You knew I, I don't say this anymore, but because I'm, I'm a little softer with my approach. But I used to often say, you know, you knew what you signed up for. Mm, yeah. Because yeah. I'm so honest. I'm so upfront. Yeah. And if you still, you know, willing to rock with me. Yeah. You know, this journey is a bumpy one. It's a fun one, but it's still, it's, you can put on your seatbelt. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and that's the thing. I think for in my situation, you know, communication would have been great. Mm. You know? Well, that's the thing. I think people have an issue right. of like when you've been deceived. Well, that's, and, and you said it best just now. You rob the person 
of their choice yeah. when you're not honest. Right. You rob the person of their choice. Now, granted, if John would have been like, hey, so I want to have a, for me, the answer would have been no. Right. <laughs> I would have been like, no. And maybe, listen, maybe because I'm selfish. <laughs> or maybe. You're human. You or I'm human. <laughs> I think, listen, it takes, I think, a lot of awareness, to right. be honest, in that way. Yeah. I think, actually, I'm not selfish. Don't, I'm not going to say that. But I think for me, that's just not the path that I want. Right. Right? But it, to your point, it robs people of their sense of choice when you're not honest. Right. You know? Yeah. And then it, it, and then, then it you know, they charge it to your character, which is a lot more work to do. To, un, to undo. undo that. Yeah, yeah, Good yeah, luck yeah. with that. Yeah, because then now... You know, you have trust issues now. It's like it's a whole of, bunch. Yeah. Yeah. Before we we had the discussion about you know, a black man being there for mm-hmm. a black woman, and I'll even personalize it. You know, mm-hmm. just knowing that I've had that conversation of like, oh, you don't date black girls, mm. which isn't true. I love all <laughs> women, uh, but it's probably now more than ever, especially. Mm. And I'm going to tread lightly when I say this, because I know this will spark some controversy. It seems like it's easier for us as black men to operate with other races and other communities Mm. because we want to do our thing Mm. and not be monogamous and kind of be out in the streets. Mm. It's a little easier Mm. to, to operate that way. Do you feel... Then a black woman ain't going for that. Bottom line, like, I mean, they always say, your black baby mama ain't putting up with all of that. But like, it's like... I mean, here's the thing. Do which you... is not true, to, but look, <laughs> so I'm saying what they say. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I mean, do you feel that as far as the connection or disconnect, and you said it, it sometimes it might be easier, do you feel like... There's an escape. I don't know. Like, is that it? Like, and it's well, in the sense of like, for example, there's an escape from, like. I'm gonna go deep on you in a minute. But I'm scared. No, because <laughs> I don't know if this is a revelation. But I think. I like it. There's a disconnect. Mm. Because if I'm operating how I'm operating to someone who's not in my community. I think I know what you're going to say, but go ahead. I don't see my mama in them. <laughs> I don't see my daughter in them. I was about to throw the pillow. <laughs> I'm like, oh, there's, you know. Mm. Um, mm. I think innately as black men, we probably do care for our black women so much. So I don't want you to be a part of my fuckery right now. Mm. I don't know. I'll that's that's a that's a revelation right there. Yeah. That's an epiphany. Well, yeah. Because I, I, I think yeah. if I were, if I were to ever, I, I wouldn't, first of all, I'd never do it. <laughs> but if I were mm-hmm. to get married again, mm. It definitely would be with a black woman Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. for so many different reasons and thoughts, you Mm -hmm. know, um, infrastructure wise. Mm -hmm. Um, Because I do have a reverence and respect Mm -hmm. for black women, but I just know my lifestyle normally does not align with what a traditional black woman you know, lifestyle leads mm-hmm. to. Because we, like you said, we come up in the church. Yeah. We have parent, we, we come, we know mm-hmm. the goal ultimately, not just black women, but women in general is like, you want to grow mm-hmm. up and mm-hmm. get married, live in a mm-hmm. monogamous household. Mm-hmm. And that's, yeah. Yeah. You've done it for almost 20 years. Like, yeah. that's true success. I mean, it, but it's taken work. It's right. taken work. And not, again, not work to keep it together, but more so our own individual work our own individual work, my work over here, yeah. his work over there, and just so happy, oh, okay, how you doing, we good. Well, when you yeah. know there's a world of Nick Cannons out there. 
Oh my god. <laughs> my my thought thought process. What is your advice to the the young black woman? Is like, is it really is it slim pickings or is it what's what's the? I mean, I have a lot of single single friends, girlfriends. And, they and they're jealous of you. No, no. <laughs> Listen, I have the best. I have the best girlfriends. I will say that, hands down. Like they she are the been with her man for okay. 20 some years. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> nah, no. She, I mean, I have some of the best girlfriends. I'm really lucky. Right. Right? Black women that are just like, I love them. Yeah. But they've said it is slim pickings. And I have heard horror stories, like to the point where I'm like, I don't ever want, I don't want to be out there because it's hard. Yeah. It's hard and it's a lot of unhealed people. Yeah. A lot of unhealed people. So what would I say to single black women who feel like, yeesh, uh, I would say, huh. How do they thrive? Mm. How do they thrive in this dating cesspool? As I heard, it's doo-doo in the pool. It is doo-doo in the pool. <laughs> it is doo-doo in the pool. What I told my friends, because this is something I've told them and I've said to them, is just keep working on you. Keep working on you. Keep working on you. Be open. Because, but ultimately, what you get to that space is women are just like, I'm gonna just be single. Or, not to say that my world is a, a world that anyone would desire, but when you're dealing with an individual like me who is upfront, who is honest, mm -hmm. you kind of avoid a lot of the bullshit to where it's like, you know what? Like, I'm not, I'm not gonna put my hands on you. I'm not gonna try to <laughs> steal your credit. I'm not gonna try to. Yeah, don't I'm do not, that. Like, I'm not, <laughs> but, like, even like, I have respect and reverence for every woman that I've ever been involved with. But even in my current scenarios, it's like, I'm just trying to provide a better lifestyle. I'm just trying mm -hmm. to provide unconditional love. I'm trying to be the best father I can be. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to be the best partner. Mm -hmm. I wanna see you win. Yeah. And because of the state that I'm in, if I can do that with multiple people, mm -hmm. is that scenario better than being alone? I mean, I say this, I would tell my friends, to stay away from Nick Cannon. No, <laughs> I would not say that. That's not what I'm saying. Well, and introduce me to some of your friends then, bro. Hey, I got friends. <laughs> I got friends that are really, really lovely people. I'm not gonna, I mean, I'm not gonna, I totally touched this mic, I'm sorry. <laughs> you're good, you're good. I mean, I, I mean, listen, <laughs> I would tell them, be open, know what you want. Mm. Know what you want. I think there are a lot of us who don't know what we want. And it's, we're kind of sacrificing our wants right. for just not being alone. Mm. Right? So with well, that- Because nobody wants to be alone. No one wants Can to be- Can you thrive and be alone? I think that we need to get good at, there's a difference between lonely and being alone. Yeah. There's a huge difference between it, right? Yeah. I don't think anyone likes being lonely. Yeah, no that, one likes to be lonely. That but sucks. they said the first lesson of love is to, you have to learn how to be alone. Right. I think we need to get comfortable with being with ourselves. Right. And I don't think a lot of us are. So that's why we will literally lower our, our wants for, okay, well, this person, and they might steal your credit. Right, right, they right. might steal your credit. He, Move into your house. He's a homeless still sexual. He is totally homeless, <laughs> but you're not alone. <laughs> you're he not just, alone. He just Roscoe is here. <laughs> he had to knock it down, <laughs> right? For some rent, right? <laughs> right? So I think we have to get okay with being with ourselves, and so many many of us are not. Yeah. We're not okay with it. I, I mean, I feel like I just now, as of three years ago, mm. got okay with being with myself. And you've been married almost 20 years. Right, but that's the thing. When you've been with someone for so long, you almost become enmeshed, mm. where we're just, you know, you know, the two become one, but we have to remember that just because the two become one, they're two different individuals. Right, right. Right? 
I just now got to the place like year, a couple years ago where I'm like, I'm a good hang. <laughs> I am a really good hang. You right. are welcome for hanging out with me, John. You are welcome <laughs> for hanging out with me. I'm a great hang and I'm okay with like, okay, he's, you know, working, he's doing his thing. You know, we're good now. We have an understanding. He's done work. He doesn't, you know, all that stuff. But I'm a good hang. Right. And I think we have to get to that place. So if I told my friends anything, which I do, you are a good hang. And you need to realize that. Because if you realize that, it's going to be a really hard time for someone just to walk up in there. Roscoe ain't going to be able to just walk up in there. But then aren't you doing yourself a disservice? Because now you put yourself on this pedestal. I know my worth. I know my value. And yeah. you're going to be knowing your worth and value by yourself. Well, I think I think there's a balance, right? Because, yes, I know my worth and I know my value. And I see your worth and I see your value. And I see how we can come together and we can be but awesome together. But isn't that together. dangerous, too? Because then you, get, then, then you start creating expectations. <laughs> and then you start seeing, like, well, if I do this and I do this and all he needs is a little bit of this and then, no. and then we gonna work through well, it. Now, when you say it like that, yes. But I think if it's a thing of two individuals working Accepting on their own. Accepting them exactly. how they are. Exactly. That's another thing too. If it's two individuals that are doing their own thing and they're working on their stuff together or, I mean, separately yeah. for a common goal or whatever, I think that's great, you know? I think also too, yes, acceptance. Right. You also need to figure out like, hey, can I live with this thing? Because that's another thing that people get into where it's like they see little things and they're like, but I can, I can change that. Yeah. Or even though that doesn't work for you. And if it doesn't work for you, it's okay. You know? But even like because the modern woman and you talk about it, you know, in the book, but it's like accepting who you are, being who you mm -hmm. are, thriving in who you are, not just surviving, but mm -hmm. thriving. Mm -hmm. But it, it almost puts in an energy of, and mm -hmm. even like I said, when I speak to my own daughters, it's like, if you become too mm -hmm. self-confident, mm -hmm. or, um, or the term that has been used for is independent, mm -hmm. um, is marriage or deep partnership even desired in the modern woman does the does the average young woman right now think about what we're teaching our our mm -hmm. women to you are the best you by yourself and all that. then now you know there's no more 18 year marriages i would say this what does too self-confident look like what does that mean a narcissist oh yeah well that i mean you're okay <laughs> At least I can admit it. <laughs> but but here's a, that's another thing. I feel like that word is thrown out way it's thrown out, too but much. But I'm taking the test. I'm that. Only okay. <laughs> only thing that I'm not. I don't have rage and I don't have a lack of empathy. I have empathy, which is really the root well, of it. Well, that's but what. But I am self indulgent. I am self confident. I believe I am the best. I'm special. I'm God's gift. As Christians, but that doesn't we mean you're a narcissist. We are the though. chosen ones, and God has an oh anointing my over my life. I had. I walk in favor. <laughs> and all of these, that's narcissistic jargon. But, but I mean, but I, I accept it. I know that I'm a, like you said, you're a good hang. I'm a good catch. I know, like, I, I, if you catch me, abundance will flow. But the fact that you admit that you have empathy. Yeah, I mean, I love that. Others. To I me, lets me know that I you put may, others before. You know, that's what I'm saying. I don't, I don't think you're a narcissist. I mean. I, I don't think I that, check about I check about you know, I mean you might be eight of the ten boxes. You might have I mean here's the thing. I think people have ego. Definitely. That's where it starts. There's a there's a there's a but there's um, range. spectrum. Right. But, and I it's don't, like it starts starts with self confidence and it goes to arrogance, yeah. then it goes to, you know, overconfidence. Uh, yeah. So self confidence, overconfidence, arrogance, narcissism. Yeah. And I'm living over there in the the, the West Wing. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, the fact that you have empathy. I mean, that's what we have to. But even in a relationship, I find that. difficult things and I've, I've done the mm. work because I go to self first. I'm selfish. I, I, mm. I run. I'm a Libra. I'm like, <laughs> okay. Hey, you know what I mean? Like, hey, whatever. I'm a Libra I, move, I'm a, so I'm I understand. I'm going to be all right. <laughs> like, like, I, I yeah. go to that place. I yeah. cut off. I shut off. Mm. And I know that's not empathy. No. You know what I mean? Well, that's survival. Right. 
that's survival right there. And that's what most women are ha having to do in these days. Not taking Abs myself out of it. Like, Absolutely. You got to hold hold on to self. Yeah. So what is the hope for the, for the modern woman when it comes to relationships? I think we have to get out of surviving for sure. Because when we are in survival, we build those walls. We build walls. And, you know, we've heard it a lot with boundaries. Mm hmm I feel like I hear that in therapy a lot. Yeah, which I love boundaries. <laughs> Let me be very clear. Boundaries are great. Boundaries yeah. have saved me in so many ways, right? However, I think we need to understand the difference between boundaries and walls. Mm. What's built out of uh, protection and survival versus what's built out of awareness, right? And this is what I need to thrive. Those are two different things. Right. And I think many of us, so many people, you know, because of our, our experiences, we, we build walls and then we, count, we call them boundaries. Mm. Yeah. Because walls you can't get over. Walls you can't get, get over. Also, walls are usually built from, you know, if you think I'm visual, so here we yeah. go. Walls are, they can be, they're, they're built out of defense. Right. 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 Boundaries are enclosing. Mm. They're protective and they encircle us, right? There's, a two, there's two different things. Boundaries are often built out of, hey, you've shown me a certain behavior. I see how this is going to end. Right. I'm a, I need to put this boundary in place to make Protect sure myself. to keep me safe. And it, they're mostly for me, you know? That's what boundaries are for, really. Right. Walls are, you've never shown me this behavior before. Right. But because of my past experience, mm. I'm going to put them in place just in case. Just in case. That's a so wall. So you can't be soft. That's a wall. You yeah. get what I'm saying? It's kind of, it's, it's very different. And I have seen that with, you know, a lot of us, you know, right. men and women. It's like, this happened to me when I, I definitely was. definitely got walls. Right. This happened to me when I was a kid. This happened. And, you know. I, I trust issues. Yep. So I'm going to put this wall up. Abandonment issues, mm -hmm. all of that stuff. And so therefore you project that onto people you've never even met before. Right. And you're like, I'm going to build this wall up just in case it happens. Versus now if I come up to you and I'm like, I've been sketchy before. Right, right. <laughs> Makes sense for you to build a boundary. <laughs> so what is that? I mean, again, what is that hope when someone who's probably dealt with all of that? Where do they go? How do they thrive? I would say one distinguished between the two. Practice mindfulness. One of the things that I think of is ask yourself when you are in a state of, am I building a wall or boundary? Should I build a wall? Is it happening again? Mm. Or does this just remind me that it happened? Ask yourself that. So when you meet someone and they seem nice and they seem to be checking all the boxes, but wait, did he just say that thing? You know what? That this thing that was really weird. <laughs> oh my gosh, wall. Yeah. Instead of doing that, okay, is it happening again? Or does this does this just make me feel like when it, whatever it was, happened? Ask yourself those two questions. Mm. You know, before you just start getting your bricks and your mortar and <laughs> cement. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And and again, own who you are. Yes. And walk in your thriving nature. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's a great place to pause. I think that's uh, just three great sessions. <laughs> uh, I've learned quite a bit. Of, uh, like I said, the book is outstanding. Thank you. Uh, if you guys haven't had it already, please go get it on Thriving. Uh, and we got to do this again. This ain't over. You know the comments is going crazy, especially after this one. Uh, <laughs> But this has been another session uh, where we don't cancel one another. We counsel one another. We create a safe space for uh, a place where we can feel together, reveal together, so we can heal together. Yeah. Thank you to Thank you. Brandy Sellers Jackson. Thank you. It's been another session of Council Culture. We out. <laughs>